Cody Rhodes versus AJ Styles for the WWE title or whatever it's called these days. Brian, you mentioned earlier the crowd did not get tired at the end of this. I would argue they peaked in the main event. They got louder. And there was more singing and chanting and bouncing and the camera was shaking. Now, I will not lie. After several hours of this, I was tired of hearing these same songs over and over and over again. They had a new song for AJ. Something about being phenomenal. He's had it for a while. Well, no, not, not his entrance music. The crowd. Oh, yes. The crowd had a new song for AJ. But uh, every single two count had the Sacramento chant, and then they would sing Sacramento over and over again. I, you ever been in a car with a kid on a road trip, and they play the same song over and over again? I don't let them. And uh, it's like going to Seattle and Portland and back, the only song you hear is Mbop. No, yeah. never happened. Yeah. That's how I felt by the end of this. I was, I was, I had heard enough singing. Just cheer, damn it. Now, they did in the end. Like The finish was hot, and they were totally into that, just screaming their full heads off, and that was awesome. But uh, there, was, there was a little bit of overkill in some of this singing and chanting. So the match itself was very intense and tightly worked. It was not your, 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 your classic WWE main event match. They went back and forth the whole way. And I was waiting and waiting for a heat or a comeback. It was, I'll do two or three moves, you do two or three moves, I'll do two or three moves, you. all the way through. And finally, after about 15 minutes of this, there's a table spot, which I can't even find in my notes here. Somebody went through a table. Cody powerbombed AJ through the announce desk. And that, to me, is when the match got great. Because then he just got back in the ring and wrestled. And again, it was all back and forth, but they were like more big moves and going for finishes, and it felt way more intense. Then it got awesome, and we had springboard 450s and burning hammers for a one count. And I do have one complaint, right? and it's because you mentioned the burning hammer, mm-hmm. and uh, there was another one on the show as well. And another burning hammer? No, there was another spot where this happened. I, see. Um, I think it was. It actually was in this match. It was when AJ gave him the brain buster on the uh, the apron. Yep. So WWE production has improved a billion percent since they got rid of that idiot Kevin Dunn. Correct. A billion percent. You know, this this guy they got in, I forget his name, but man, he has just brought so much cool stuff to WWE. But there is one thing that, I mean, I'm sure they, I'm, I've seen it actually in AEW as well, Lee Fitting is his name. I, I've, I've seen this happen in AEW and other places as well. But I think this is a non-wrestling person deal, why they do this. There were at least two spots in this match where when they happened, I screamed like, holy shit. Holy shit, that was too dangerous. And then they do a replay from a different angle, right? Oh, I see. And you see that it was not dangerous at all. Now, I understand in UFC, NFL, NBA, whatever, it's awesome play. I don't give a fuck what, whatever camera has the best angle, you know, show the replay or whatever. It's different in wrestling. If you have an angle where AJ gives Cody a burning hammer, it looks like he landed on his fucking head and neck and is dead. Don't find me a different angle right. where it shows that he landed perfectly flat on his back and it wasn't dangerous at all. I don't want the guys to get hurt, obviously, but you don't need to destroy the illusion, okay? If it looks great in the shot that you've got, just replay that shot. Don't replay a shot where we see the magic trick, how it's done. So anyway, mm-hmm. twice that happened in this match, and it's happened some other times as well. But man, when I first saw that burning hammer, I was like, what in the fuck are you doing, AJ? This is Cody Rhodes. He's the champion. We had a two-year build. Do not kill this guy. And then they showed another uh, angle, and oh, that's fine. That's perfect. He's a pro. Which I knew, but like, you don't have to tell me. So anyway. You know, the match was good. I but he hadn't finished, it. by the way. Well, it was, it was very sorry. close. For, for, for the record, it, uh, Cody kicked out of something and fired up. It was the burning hammer. He kicked out of one. And he fires up and is basically hulking up from his knees. And AJ is scurred. And that's the, the crowd electric. Just, just a lightning bolt hits everyone and they're going crazy. And uh, very quickly from there, uh, AJ does a top rope Cody Cutter, which he had only done the middle rope before. Did essentially the Rainmaker pose and a crossroads and won. So the first time he hit crossroads, he won. AJ never got the Styles Clash. They protected their finishers very well. Cody gets the win. Place is going crazy. I, it took me a while to get into this, but after that powerbomb through the table, when they got into the ring, it just had a kick-ass wrestling match. It was, in fact, a kick-ass wrestling match, and I was a big fan. 
yeah, the match was good. It was not great. I, I wouldn't call this a great WWE main event, but it was very good, and the crowd made it that much better. Um, they didn't have to do much to get this crowd. They didn't. Nobody had to do anything to get this crowd all night. Uh, Cody, when he did the Cody cutter off the top rope, almost overshot AJ. Um, it was a, a tremendous uh, finishing sequence, and uh, and uh, I had uh, my wife was watching, and I had friends over for the first time in a while, and uh, D Wayne's wife thought uh, Cody was uh, very handsome, and uh, he's dashing. Exactly, he's dashing Cody Rhodes, I, yeah. and uh, and uh, she said uh, something to the effect of, "I really enjoyed that. I might watch more." Okay, not just because of Cody, but the, sure. the whole atmosphere of the. Of the <laughs> well, what a, what a first show to watch! She right. ain't getting this crowd ever again. <laughs> right. I thought this match was great, a fantastic main event, and like we talked about on the Observer Radio Show yesterday. There's been a, a big change in terms of how everyone works matches, and that is that uh, the handcuffs are not, like, all the way off. Like, they're not going to let you do, like, a tiger driver, you know, plant a guy on his head or any, like, super dangerous shit. But, I mean, you know, they let uh, Sammy do that top rope brain buster, which he was never, ever, ever allowed to do before. And certain things are obviously going to be protected, and certain finishes, like, you know, they're not going to let anybody go in there and do a stun or anything like that. Yeah. But under the parameters of, you know, don't steal somebody else's finish and this and that, I mean, guys are being allowed to go out there, and the women, and uh, and do matches like they would do anywhere. And this was this was one of them. I mean, they would have probably done this exact same match in New Japan, probably would have done this exact same match in AEW, would have done this exact same match the old ring of honor. I mean, brain buster on the fucking apron, burning hammer, kickouts at one. I mean, you know, Hunter did this to a degree in NXT before when, when he was doing NXT and, and they would do those takeovers and they would kind of uh, somewhat take the handcuffs off everybody. And, you know, there was uh, some controversy because he was letting the guys have better matches than they were allowed to have on the main roster. Well, now he's in charge, and these guys are doing a hell of a lot more. All up and down this show. And you can see the guys that have worked all over the world, like Cody, AJ, you know, uh, Gunther, Sammy. You know, they're in there doing that kind of match now. And then you've got the other guys who were born and bred in WWE, like Jey Uso, who are literally out there doing the same match they've always done. Yeah. Because that's the match Jey Uso knows. So... If you've been there from day one, that's the match you're going to do. If you've been all over the world, everyone's doing a lot more stuff. And I thought this match was great. I thought the entire show was, I mean, it was an excellent show. I think the the lowest star rating I gave everything was, anything was three and a quarter. That sounds right. And everything else was, was above that. It was a very good show made extra memorable by the atmosphere. Yeah. That's true. And five matches. Not even pre-show yeah. matches. Not even oh, pre-show. Really? There was nothing on the pre-show. Oh, huh. They just did five matches, two hours and 50 minutes. It's how long pay-per-views used to be back in the day. I have not heard one single solitary complaint from anybody that the show was too short. Yeah. So, obviously, the Money in the Bank, SummerSlam, Royal Rumble, Survivor Series, and WrestleMania, those are all going to be four hours or whatever. But I like that the non-Big Five are three hours or less. Great. Sure. So, going back to what you said, how soon do you think we start seeing pile drivers back in WWE? We do see some. Really? Yeah, we've seen some pile drivers. Okay. So, uh, you know, like an old Jerry Lawler, ba bam. Yeah, of course. I don't think they're letting anyone do the tombstone though. That's going to always be Undertaker's move. Oh well, yeah. As long as they think he'll come back here and there and tombstone somebody, I don't think anybody else is going to get it. Thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and click that notify button and you'll never miss a video again.